Hi friends, this is Siva Khoya, creator of PeopleSoft channel. I hope you are coping up well in these challenging times. A couple of weeks back, our channel crossed 1000 subscriber mark. I just want to come in front of you and say thank you. Thank you PeopleSoft community. Let's get into our today's topic. PeopleSoft has all these exciting new features. But remember, Rome wasn't built in a day. So was PeopleSoft. So today, I want to take a step back and show you how PeopleSoft evolved over time. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the journey of PeopleSoft. Guys, let's travel back to 1960s and 70s. Those are pre-ERP times. I mean, forget about ERP. Not even personal computers are available at that time. Manufacturing companies started automating some of their tasks using a computer software. Let's take an example of a car manufacturing company. In order to manufacture one car, they need four tires, an engine, brakes, and whatnot. If they plan to manufacture 1000 cars, what are the quantities of raw materials required? All these things are calculated using a computer software. Let's go through one more example. Manufacturing process involves several steps, like procuring raw materials, fabricating, assembling, and so on. Each one of the steps is scheduled again using a computer software. From which date to which date they need to do procuring raw materials, from which date to which date they need to complete the fabrication in order to finish the product for a particular day. The software I am referring here is called MRP. MRP stands for Material Requirements Planning. Let's move on to 1980s. Over time, some additional modules were integrated into the MRP software like finance and marketing so that they can forecast the demand of the product and based on that, they can plan manufacturing using our MRP system. They used to call the software as MRP2 or Material Resource Planning. If you pause for a second and notice the difference between MRP and MRP2, MRP is all about streamlining the existing manufacturing process and MRP2 is about forecasting and planning. SAP is one of the market leaders in MRP systems. In those days, the core MRP software was hosted in a big server called mainframes. This is where all the processing and data presentation happens. Access to information is gained using what they call a dump terminal. The dump terminal wasn't used to share any work related to the MRP software. It just exists to view the data on the server. By 1990s, even though manufacturing and other related processes were automated, companies used to still log in into different systems to carry other company related activities. For example, for customer payments, they used to log in into one system. Employee payroll, they used to log in into a different system. This is when PeopleSoft was born with a mission to bring entire functionality under one roof, be it HR, finance, manufacturing, you name it. And the package is called ERP, Enterprise Resource Planning. Next, I will show you how PeopleSoft evolved over time. Before that, let's talk about the visionary behind PeopleSoft. He's none other than David Duffield and let's see how he started. During those times, popular software vendors like SAP and Oracle were focusing mainly on manufacturing and financial services. David, on the other hand, picked up a product that was not supported by them. It is Human Resource Management System. Before PeopleSoft, he founded two mainframe based systems. The very first one is Integral Systems. It manages human resources and accounting systems. The second company was Information Associates, which was specialized in creating apps for higher education. Later, he co-founded PeopleSoft with Ken Morris in 1987. Since the very first software they developed is about managing people, maybe that is the reason they called it PeopleSoft. PeopleSoft is the first ERP software to adopt client-server architecture or two-tier architecture. All of us are familiar with two-tier architecture and most of us use it every day. When we connect our app designer to our database directly, 
to create people tools definitions we are actually using two tier architecture in earlier days not people tools definitions the actual application itself is hosted on a app designer like environment unlike mainframe systems some of the workload was handled by the client like configuring user preferences storing people tools cache so that pages can load a little faster generating local trace files etc at that time it is a big step forward compared to traditional mainframe systems in 2005 people soft was acquired by oracle so he came out along with anil bushri he co-founded the company you know workday providing cloud based erp solution workday is gaining popularity these days because it automatically takes care of software upgrades and also the application can be accessed from anywhere that applies to both customers and developers and also it provides mobile friendly user interface if you notice dave duffield is one of the early adopters of client server technology as well as recently he is the first one to participate in cloud revolution which tells us that he is a true visionary and always forward looking but remember people soft still holds a good market share in the erp space and it is giving a tough fight by releasing advanced features now let's explore how people soft evolved over time like i mentioned before people soft was founded in the year 1987 and it released its first product hrms in the year 1989 and you know it is the most popular product from people soft in the year 1994 they released financial applications 1996 manufacturing this tells us they are very aggressive with their product strategy in the year 1997 people soft version 7 was released in this release they expanded the client server architecture by adding another tier they called it app server to better handle the client requests we will discuss more on it soon in the same version our very own app designer was released in the same version they released data mover tool that can be used by system admins to export and import data into people soft application in 1998 people soft released student admin module today we call it campus solutions i believe majority of us universities still use people soft in 1999 craig conway was named a ceo of people soft replacing david duffield it was the year 2000 internet revolution was just starting and people soft jumped on the bandwagon people soft released version 8 to leverage internet capabilities which means if you just have internet connection you can access people soft application anywhere in the world an additional web tier was added to deliver html content to the browser app server introduced in 7.5 manages the communication between the web server and database server with the new internet technology new tools were released making it easy for people soft to integrate with other applications the tools were component interface app messaging and also they enhanced app engine between the year 2002 and 2003 people tools version 8.4 was released some of the key features were registration wizard that we use even today to register our fluid as well as classic pages and the second one is the capability to download the contents of a grid into a microsoft excel and the last one is enhancing the ability of hyperlink to navigate between different people soft applications for example sitting inside finance application you can directly navigate to a hr page in the year 2004 dave duffield was reappointed as the ceo of people soft in 2005 people soft was acquired by oracle in 2006 oracle released people soft version 9 along with people tools 8.48 with this release came a new reporting tool called xml publisher which does a similar job to crystal reports the plan was to eventually convert all the existing crystal reports into xml publisher reports i was proud to be part of this project when i was working at oracle bangalore i believe i had converted around 20 to 30 crystal reports into xml publisher reports the reason being oracle was paying license fee to crystal reports they want to avoid that fees and save money for customers if you don't know crystal reports is currently owned by sap with this release people soft revamped workflow creation process 
In the old method of designing workflow, they call visual approver. Most of the definitions like business process, activity, steps are designed by developer inside app designer. Now they moved everything to the front end so that even functional users can configure workflow through PIA. They call it approval workflow engine. They also streamline the way we create integrations in PeopleSoft using integration broker. Just like workflow, most of the definitions were created by developer in the old method of integration like message, message channel, etc. They replaced with modern terminology like service, service operations, queues, etc. And again, they made it easy for the functional users to create integrations through front end. Of course, there are still some parts developer need to code in app designer, but majority of the configuration is moved to front end. PeopleSoft released version 9.1 in the year 2009. In 2011, PeopleSoft started supporting REST based integration, starting with PeopleTools 8.52. Just to give you some idea about REST integration, most of the actions that you do on a website, like manually searching videos on YouTube, you can do the same sitting inside PeopleSoft application using PeopleCode. That's the power of REST integration. In the year 2013, PeopleSoft released version 9.2 for both finance and HCM. Oracle changed the delivery model after the release of 9.2. Good news is customers are no longer needed to upgrade to gain access to new features. Instead, customers can pick and choose the features they want and apply them independently. In 2014, PeopleSoft with tools release 8.54 provided a set of new tools for developers to create mobile friendly pages. They call it Fluid Framework. Now, PeopleSoft developers can create pages with modern look and feel leveraging CSS5 and JavaScript. In the same version, PeopleSoft released a tool called Data Migration Workbench that allows us to migrate application data from one environment to another environment by just logging into PeopleSoft application instead of using SQL scripts. For example, if you want to migrate all business unit definitions from one environment to another environment, now we can do it by logging into PIA and using the tool Data Migration Workbench. In the year 2015, PeopleSoft released Campus Solutions 9.2. During the same time frame, a feature called Related Content Event Mapping was released to inject people code customizations with this new framework without touching the delivered code. Basically, we are eliminating retrofitting the code after each upgrade. This is a big cost saver. During the same time frame, PeopleSoft partnered with open source search engine, Elastic Search Engine, just like Yahoo partnered with Google to improve the search process. This partnership really improved searching data inside PeopleSoft application. One more feature called Page Field Configurator allows us to add custom validations on a PeopleSoft page without logging into App Designer. This means we can add validation on a page with a couple of clicks without any need to migrate objects. In 2017, with PeopleTools 8.57, Oracle released Cloud Manager. With this, customers can move their on-premise PeopleSoft environment to Oracle Cloud. They call it lift and shift. Using Cloud Manager, we can quickly create PeopleSoft environments. It is a big step forward. In 2018, with PeopleTools 8.57, a feature called Drop Zones was released. Using this feature, we can add custom fields on a page without logging into App Designer just through configuration. Just like Page Field Configurator, we can quickly enhance application without migrating any App Designer objects. In this year, with PeopleTools 8.58, PeopleSoft also integrated with Kibana, an open source visualization tool to run advanced analytics on PeopleSoft data. It's a pretty powerful tool. Check it out. That's pretty much about it, guys. I am sure I would have missed a lot of other interesting features. Feel free to share those features in the comments section below for the benefit of our PeopleSoft community. That's all I have for you today. For more interesting content, don't forget to visit my channel. I'll be back with one more interesting topic next week. If you have any suggestion for me, feel free to drop in the comment section below. I would really appreciate it. Thank you so much for your time. See you next week. Until then, keep learning.